Who's going to win? Why don't you tell us? And uh, we'll have that on your screen in just a second. We'll just wait for the results here, and it's going to be Orglis taking it away in terms of these two teams. I would imagine that in the case where the team doesn't have a, a win, unless they were really stiff competitions, that you probably go with the team that has the victory here, if you're looking for an explanation. In fact, Orglis didn't actually look that bad yesterday on Clubhouse against Rise Nation. Yeah, and if we're being honest, I mean, Orglis has more experience. I mean, if you, if you really want to lay it out there, they are the more experienced team, and they are certainly, yes, uh, having just staved off relegations in the last season, you know, trying their best to keep themselves in Pro League this season. Again, I'm sure they're going to have to work for that. But at the same time, they've been here, they've done that, and they've got a little bit of a leg up because of that. Now, getting into Consulate, Accelerate will be starting our bands off, of course, because they're on defense first. And they will get rid of Blackbeard. So look at that, two Blackbeard bands in a row. First one's out of the gate, too. This one makes a lot more sense because of the map. He was also banned twice at minimum yesterday. I didn't exactly... Mm. Unfortunately, I didn't write down the exact number of bands, but I know that he was at least banned twice yesterday, for my memory serving me correctly. Ying will join the banned list as well, right next to her cohort, Blackbeard, and we'll see now with Orglis banning first defender, which ones will likely go. Not too much of a surprise to see Echo being taken out on console if that ends up being Orglis's ban, or possibly even being saved for Accelerate. But there you go. Echo does tend to be, I think now, the most banned defensive operator, at least since Rio. My question is, is there going to be a Maestro to follow up that Echo? Because, oh yeah, there it is. So Maestro and Echo again, gone. Now, you, this might sound a little bit extreme to some people, but I feel as though if you ban out Maestro and Echo, it's a, it's a totally different game. I really do feel that way. Uh, the gameplay takes a huge shift away from... In, er, away from the kind of the static, more uh, st uh, solid defense that the, def uh, the defenders can put up with those two operators to a little bit more of a forced aggression from the defensive side. Uh, you really, you just, you don't have as much information, so you don't have, you can't make plays based on that information. Because of that, you have to play based on game sense and instinct and all the other information that you can accumulate based on your other information gathering operators. But again, that is limited without those two ops. So it's just... It's a to it, again, it, to me, it's a totally different game. Attackers you could compare it to banning Habana and Thermite. Or maybe, maybe one of them and Maverick. I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure, I'm not. You could say Habana and Thermite. It is a pretty extreme case for the defense, in my opinion. And it is going to change the way they play. Or at least it hopefully will. Because if it doesn't, if uh, either Orglis or Accelerator are unable to adapt to the lack of an Echo and a Maestro, then they will very much suffer on the defensive side. To be fair, we have seen Thermite and Hibana banned. I think there was that, yeah. there was that boot camp, I want to say maybe Team yeah, 1 match? Well, it's, ha it's happened way a lot. Way back in Latin America when they uh, they both ended up getting banned, and it was a uh, it was a very interesting match, let's put it that way. It was on it's a border. different game. It was on border, and it was, it was messy, to say the least. I don't know if, it, okay, maybe, maybe comparing it to a Thermite Habana ban is a little bit extreme. I'm not sure. But it is, it is definitely up there. A Maestro Echo ban, getting rid of both of them, is, is a very, very heavy blow to the defense in terms of the, the typical meta. And it does force a shift in how you play the game. It kind of reminds me of uh, when Mira first came out. Everything changed. Mira, Mira, Mira. Then people started banning Mira once you could start banning. And then everything changed again because she's almost always banned. It's, it's similar to that. And I'm sure it will change. It'll be a big part of how the meta plays out moving forward in the season. What's the cycle that happens here? Is we're on yeah. the first map uh, or the first round here of the matchup between Orglis and Accelerate, where things are cyclical in this game. People ban Mira, so Mira doesn't get scrimmed all that often. It was very similar to this map, actually. At one point, it was considered one of G2's best maps. You don't take G2 to Consulate. What ended up happening? Well, teams started banning the map against G2 over and over and over again. So G2 stopped scrimming this map as much. So G2 got worse at this map when they started playing it again, and you saw their win-loss begin to slip. Now, transitioning in towards what we're seeing here between Orglis and Accelerate, Mute gets a lot of value on a number of maps. Consulate happens to be one of them, and that's because when you're defending the basement floor, you can stack your Mute Jammers above the ground, and it will jam drones on that main floor as well. It allows you to basically hold off two floors with one jammer. That's exactly what we're seeing right now from the way that Accelerate has set this up. And you got to see it for just a second over by Spiral Stairs as Orglis was trying to take uh, a little bit of awareness as to where Accelerate is playing. And Schlongi here 
bottom floor on the main floor just waiting with Achieved. So this good flank potential for EXG. Yeah, they certainly can come up behind their opponents right now. You've got Yeti trying to hold the top floor. You can see he's the flank watch. He looks away at the wrong moment. A double flank can come in for Accelerate. Yeti will not look away though, and he detects the trouble. Put some fire onto Shlong, and he puts him down to about 50, 55 HP. So, good damage there done by Yeti. But more importantly, he's holding onto the flank for his teammates, allowing them to push the actual site. While well, you have two roamers off-site, and my man working away vertically. So he could do some massive damage. If he's able to get one kill, that is going to put the last two remaining anchors at a severe disadvantage when the actual site push comes out. And from above, he's in control still of the man. He will lose Yeti as Shlongi is attack. there. But Diffuser going down quite successfully as they'll trade blows. My man with two trying to get back towards the site. Acid, a long rotate. They're going to need to get to that Diffuser in a hurry. It's only up to my man. He's going to get oh. spotted on two angles. A great flick. But he'll be shut down by Achieved and Accelerate. He did a round victory to start things off on the right foot. And they will clobber Orglis as they don't let ORG. Defenders get through win. the post plant, and as they transition out, it's a great read from Accelerate to be able to close that door and grab the Diffuser as well, giving the Defenders round number one on a map that, we should note, does tend to go to the defense as of late quite well. So I gotta say, that round was a bit of a mess for both teams. Uh, the main thing I, I want to take away there for, for, again, for both teams, a lack of teamwork uh, and understanding of roles. So, uh, for example, Maman was the one who got the initial uh, flanker, but Yeti was the flank watch. He was the designated flank watch. He did not do his job. He then shifted to try and do other things. You saw a lot of people uh, also in that round on both sides of the fence uh, just kind of looking around, looking for enemies. You know, it, it, was, it was all over the place. Uh, that was certainly the way I would describe it. So... Um, yeah, a bit of a mess. Uh, we should not have seen Orglis plant the diffuser. They didn't have uh, adequate cover to support a diffuser plant. Uh, on top of that, also, Accelerate should not have allowed the diffuser plant, though again, we can attribute that to the lack of the Echo and Maestro. Fair enough. There was a smoke in play, so you can make an argument for that being the smoke's fault. Either way, though, a lot of the typical tools for denying that diffuse plant not available to Accelerate. Good job to them for being able to collapse as the Diffuse Plant went down and get the frags to give themselves the round win in the end. But again, yes, overall, just a very messy round from both teams, I have to say. This mute strategy really didn't seem to uh, be stopped all that much by Orglis. Mute is an operator who has been very interesting. His pick rate, yeah. if you remember, was in the toilet for so long. But now... Since getting that SMG-11, it's shot upwards quite well. Yeah. I, I think a lot of players are also bringing out the shotgun because the uh, the SAS shotgun is up there is the best, I think, from oh, both, for sure. most professional players. And, I mean, if you're going to have Maestro Permaban now, you can run a mute for that destruction that you usually see on the Bailiff as well, and it doesn't also require a Mira with her secondary shotgun. So if you look at the lineup on Accelerate side of things, it's not just going to be Thomas, it's the Smoke who's able to do that environmental destruction, but it's also going to be Shlongi's mute, and that's exactly right. But the MP5 that will be in the hands of Shlongi in this case, it actually looked like he had the MP5 last round too. It makes a lot of sense because, I mean, this is Consulate. Consulate has a lot of those long angles. Shotgun is useful here, but it's less than some other maps. Speaking of long angles, oh, what a shot there from Achieved. Yeah, he's going to have to sit down and think about that one for a little while mm -hmm. there as Achieved manages to just absolutely obliterate Yeah on the yellow stairs, and you will lose your IQ, whose gadget could be oh so handy, as there are four operators on Accelerate side of things that could be detected by that IQ scanner. Yeah, the utility there from Yeti being lost is huge, and I mean, he could have hunted down Achieve specifically, but I mean, in the end, it comes down to the gunfight, and a little bit of a miscalculation there on Yeti's part, and it happens, it does. B is pretty sparsely defended here from EXG. They've got a surround set up, but it can be clamped off using these Capital Bolts. We'll see if Orgus can pull it off. That seems to be their plan. It's a great cooked grenade here, and it'll find its target as Achieve dives out of the window and looks to try to get back in as a man will be able to grab that one quite easily, but it's a full court press from Accelerate as they'll find another kill this time onto Acid. You can just Brian and Maman, the two newest entrants to Orgus roster as the sole survivors of Consulate. 
There goes Brian. So man is once again going to be in a 1vx this time. It's going to be a 1v4, similar to last time, a pre-fire from Crusher. So man engages through the doorway onto the yellow stairs. Still tons of time for man to make something work here. But when you're attacking Consulate, as you mentioned, there's lots of long sight lines, and it's a very thin and narrow map. And there's a lot of windows to try to keep hold up, too. That's especially problematic for man, who will need to grab said diffuser not too far off. Just biding his time, knowing that there's likely going to be a body in here. What a peek by the man! He'll walk right in and he'll dust cruster, but dust cruster, but from behind. <laughs> Talk too fast there. I got ahead of myself, but Biologic is set up for the refrag after you see Zulu being defended from two different angles and nowhere from a man to go. That's two points in a row for Accelerate here on defense. So I have to point out, as I'm sure most of you have noticed, my man's mechanics right now are absolutely on point. He is clean in his play. But he, always, he always has been, to be fair. Yeah, to be fair. But especially today. I really have to give him props for it. But moving apart from that, again, it comes back to the teamwork. Because while my man is hitting his shots, he's making his plays, the rest of his team is just falling apart. Uh, and they didn't even get close to an actual take in that round. There was no point in which I was thinking, okay, this is the strategy that Orglis is implementing. No, no, for most of that round, it was Accelerate just pushing out onto Orglis and taking their advantages, taking their kills. And I, I talked about this in, in the pre-match. That's kind of how Consulate plays out sometimes. Not exactly surprising, but it should be something that Orglis is punishing a little bit more rapidly. Uh, for example, we did see uh, my man managed to get the refrag on the player who ran out uh, from the bathroom window to get uh, one of my man's teammates, but it took him a while, and if the window had been open by Z, there would not have been said refrag. So definitely Orglis needs to, I think, uh, tighten things up, but hey, my man's doing pretty well. Attackers recovered the diffuser. Attackers it's nice to see, it's nice to see Dale have a, a good landing after Obey went under. Yeah. I think the only real members of that team, you know, you, you still haven't seen what's going to happen with Adam, nor you're going to see what's going to happen with Benji. I believe Benji's playing with the team for the six Invitational quals, as well as uh, as well as Challenger League quals. But I haven't really heard all that much from Adam. Well, I mean, you know what happens with players who have spots named after them. They retire K9. Yeah, but his was recent, Michael. Okay, fair. Where's Kickstar on the map? Uh, there is I no, feel there like people ask, where's Kickstar an awful lot? And I think that's because you must have a spot on the map. <laughs> yeah. And they'll be like, oh, it's right here on this they're, map. They're talking about Kickstar. Where's, where's Kickstar? What is that? So, there, there is no Kickstar. <laughs> well, no. But I mean, the man has always been given a lot of commendation from his teammates. That was the point I was trying to get. And right. If you speak to a lot of NA pros, they will give him very high praise here. You can say the same for both Achieved and Biologic as well on Accelerate. Yeah. Both of whom have been grinding longer than almost anybody and haven't had the results that they want. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Thomas with the mute finally equips the shot Gun, so Shlongi will go off the mute, and it doesn't take too much to fill a body full of lead with that, and the very first kill will go to Accelerate as they literally break this wide open. We'll get back to the analysis of this match. I mean, that's exactly what Accelerate has been doing throughout these rounds. Into the third, they've just been finding opportunities. He heard the repel, the window was prepped, he vaulted it, he got a kill, and there's nothing that Orglis is doing to shut that down. They need to either, they need to expect it and counter it in some way, and they should be expecting it considering, again, that's what Accelerate have been doing this whole match. The biggest problem that I'm finding right now for Orglis is just they are all over the place. There doesn't really seem to be much True. follow True. here as Achieve gets felled by the IQ of Yeti, who's holding that long desk angle. Need I remind you that the bomb site is lobby on that main floor, so while it is imperative that the attackers take control of that second floor, you're going to want to focus your transition towards floor number one at some point, mm -hmm. and that is going to be Orglis's biggest challenge. They still, with a minute to go, have not been able to t seize all of that second floor away from Accelerate. And in fact, it looks like Orgos might be a little bit drone-starved and not really know where EXG is placed across the map. That's a problem as that clock will greatly aid the defenders whose locations are currently unknown to the attackers. We talked about this earlier, you have to get aggressive on those drones, on that information game, when you, as the defenders, lack information yourself. So you have to counter the attacker's form of that exact same thing. Yeti, that's a well-placed claim, or will counter anyone who vaults from long desk if uh, they lose control of top floor. You could see, because of that claim, or 
Clearly, Orglis is trying to push into the main lobby. And they will be taken out in that attempt. Three for Accelerate, one for Orglis, and Yeti, the one to get the kill, will be the last alive. In the one versus three in only 13 seconds, he has to drop. He's not even sure where the bullets are coming from at this point, and Accelerate will take the round. This is pretty par for the course on a map that you expect the defense to do well on. I know that you might get tired of us yeah. saying, oh, this map is very defender-sided. Right now, we're looking at more maps being defender-sided than not. Certain sites obviously go certain ways, and operator bands play a pretty huge role in that. But what is most remarkable is how Accelerate is able to run this tally up without an Echo and a Maestro, two of the best tools that the defenders can have. I have to say that they are, I think, not the most influential bands on this map with the playstyle that Accelerate are putting out. Because we talked about it. How do you compensate for that lack of information? You get a little bit more aggressive, you start feeling out the room, feeling out the map as the defenders. Accelerate are doing that and then some. And Orglis aren't countering it. Accelerate are not just getting aggressive, they are running yeah, out of the building to get kills and getting right back in. So, I think, okay, yes, the Maestro and Echo Ban, huge, 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 no matter where you are. And at the same time, on Consulate, with the way Accelerator playing, they're making up for it. And then some. I mean, these have been some pretty dominant rounds. And on top of that, again, I have to point a finger at Orglis. They are doing very little to deal with the problem of Accelerate's aggression. So definitely something Orglis are going to need to uh, focus up on. I think I, <laughs> this is <laughs> kind of rem remind me of uh, the last match we just watched, where I was saying the same thing about Rogue. I think something that uh, Orglis could do to Maybe alleviate the problem a little bit. You know, go together as a team. Stack up a little bit more. Because you pointed it out yourself. They've been very spread out, and it has been costing them. Yeah, and Accelerate is really taking advantage of that. And it's we've talked about this level of play that Challenger League needs to adapt to when they come up to Pro League, mm -hmm. right? They need to start to play more like a Pro League team, which might seem a little bit condescending to people who don't understand that. What we're essentially meaning is that aggression, while really helpful in Challenger League, is not the be-all and end-all of Pro League you need to be much more refined because there were teams who cut you down with well-established crossfires, fighting for traits, refrags, etc. Orglis has shown very minimal of any of those three things, which means that Accelerate can actually be emboldened to play that style that worked so well to get them that first overall spot in NA Challenger League and amplify it to try and absolutely cut off Orglis. And I think at the same time, Orglis is caught in the middle of that transition, aren't they? You know, they've been, again, I talked about it earlier, they're the more experienced team in this match. They've been playing in Pro League for a while, and they're trying to adapt to the Pro League style. They've been doing it for a while, but that's costing them now that they're playing against the team that just came out of Challenger League. They've adjusted a little bit too much, and they're not fully solidified in their experience. Now, all that said, here we go. Yet again, Orglis very slow on the entry. And this time they're going at the newer bomb site. As you can see, we've got that two floor set up here from Accelerate. So it's a little bit of another curveball here being thrown by Accelerate. And that is going to put Orglis in a really bad position. It's gonna be really difficult for teams to attack if they don't know how to do it. But look at that, Orglis is in right now. They're gonna barnstorm it. And this will be Accelerate losing big and will require on their roamers to come right in. Shlongi takes two down and crazy and Yeti as Yeti eliminates oh. Crusher, a refrag from Acid on the Shlongi. Biologic C4 will miss. My man also missing is Thomas, making his mark newest entrant to Accelerate, moving off the coaching roll. Great oh. pings in here, and this is a possible win with Biologic coming in and spraying down Brian, and then Acid, Accelerate, four to nothing. What happened there with that plant? Where was the plant, Orglis? They had so many opportunities, and they just didn't get it down. Then when they went for the final attempt in one of the most exposed positions possible, exposed to the double windows, exposed to the rotation hole, which is, in my opinion, the key, the cornerstone to that defense, and one of the positions that Schlongi, for example, made great work out of. So overall, the decision-making there for Orglis, questionable. I love the strat call, and you called it with all the hype which was required and necessary. Orglis made the play for the site. They made it work. It was beautiful. And then they didn't lock it out. Thank you for complimenting me in the midst of all of that. That's very kind of you. <laughs> it, you know, No problem, Parker. You deserve it. Now, overall, again, I really cannot stress how confusing and it is that Orglis did not capitalize upon the abundance of opportunity they had there to plant the diffuser and lock out the round. But... All that said, 
even if they had gotten the Diffuser down, I do question if they had been if they would have been able to lock out the round in the post. Because, I mean, they were just falling apart there. Ten seconds to go. You know one thing that I really want to take away from that whole uh, ordeal, and one, uh, actually from the match, if we, if we take a zoom out here, Orglis at times have been spread out, yes. But also, this is something I've noticed. Whenever they are shoulder to shoulder, they are very rarely refragging each other. And if they do, it is not in the same engagement. It's in a totally separate one from a different angle. So it's it's very weird. You don't you don't often see that. They're next to each other. They're within proximity. And usually what that does is force teamwork to happen if you have even an ounce of a synergy with the people you're shoulder to shoulder with. But it's just not happening right now for Orgus. It isn't. It's, it's not coming through. And we've seen them be excellent at teamwork in the past, but it's just not right now. I wonder how much of this, too, is just Orglis's lack of knowledge when it comes to console. There's a very Could real poss there's a very real possibility that Orglis just approaching this matchup, not very familiar with console, and then you have a good opportunity for Accelerate on a map that they like to be able to excel. <laughs> You did. In this time to play. I, I had to get it out at least one time. Okay, okay. Well, Don't worry, I'll make an accelerate joke about them picking up speed at some point. But I mean, I think we already got well past that as they're four rounds up at the moment. And my man's just narrowly going to miss Achieved playing underneath that hatch, who will stay there and watch the hatch. This is not a smart play by almost any stretch of the imagination. You know that there's a buck above you, and you literally go prone underneath the hatch to watch up for it. That will burn you more times than not. Achieve just walked away from not only my man above him, but somebody outside the front door with the door open. In no universe should he have gotten away with that. And that is really on Orglis's shoulders. That has nothing to do with Achieve. I mean, Achieve made a, a, a really a big gamble pushing into main lobby. He should have been punished. He was not. And now he's going to get a kill. Brian goes down. My man able to get the refrag. So Orglis at least fight back. But it should have been. A 5-4, Orglis' his favor there. On top of that, they lost the Habana. That is absolutely detrimental. And that could end up being a huge blow. What this also means is that providing that Accelerate has the information as to the hard breach logistics of Orglis that you know that you don't need to defend that garage anymore, which means that all of Accelerate can turn their fire over towards a push from Yellow, Spiral, and Visa. That essentially means that you only need to really hold off three angles because the hatches are still reinforced, which means that you can't drop, if you're Orgless, through that front hatch, you can't drop over on the side of bathroom either. This is going to be a real tough nut to crack here and will require a lot of fragging potential from Orgless, which thankfully they have. It'll get started though with Schlongi taking out Acid. It felt by crazy. Biologic fills Yeti's body full of lead. With Thomas waiting at the doorway, hearing the C7E. He might flirt with disaster, but he gets the shot off. The man once again will be all on his lonesome. There's a hole in the wall and he'll walk right in, but Biologic can't connect the shots. It'll be Crusher there to dive in. An extraordinary teamwork has been the story for Accelerate so far to be able to string together five rounds and the best performance that they've had so far through three playdays in North America. Yeah, it's important to know that Accelerate have lost both of their matches prior to this one, and, and not just lost, but dominant uh, victories for their opponents. Uh, they've gotten three rounds outside of this match in all of Pro League. So they're having, like, as perfectly, uh, you said it perfectly, the best match of their season. Uh, but okay, step back that round, all of it comes down to Achieved. And it, not because he made some amazing, crazy play, because Orglis let him get the kill onto Habana. Not only did they allow him to walk away from main lobby into piano, despite having a two-way crossfire on him, they did not drone out Defendant piano. And yes, I understand he was playing vigil, but they would have seen the static. They did not drone out piano, so they could not tell that he was playing there. The Worst thing that Orglis did in that round, aside from those two mistakes, Habana pushed in first. And they were going for a drop down take into the basement. Why? Why? The Chief only needed one kill in that round to win it. And it was him who won it. No drop downs open on a drop down take, and no rotation on the take from Orglis. It's a free round for Accelerate. And. I, I can see your face, you want to say it. Are you gonna? No, he's repressing it. But it was a free round for Accelerate. We can say that with confidence. 
And this is curious, they brought a Clash. Clash has pick rate since the changes to her in terms of her quick swap and things such as that have really seen her pick rate plummet. She was a major nuisance for teams that didn't know how to deal with her. She necessitated a composition often built around the way that the defense would play. This would be a Zofia or a Capital. At the time, that worked out quite well for the attackers because Zofia's pick rate was through the roof, often occupying 60 to 70 percent and being one of the most valuable and effective operators that could be basically put into any situation. She's very malleable when it came to compositions. But since then, Zofia's pick rate has fallen. We've seen a resurgence in Buck, Sledge, Ash, and even Jackal's pick rate increasing. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Orglis is going to be able to take care of Clash, because really outside of a frag grenade on my man, or an EMP on Acid, there's not an awful lot there. I can also see the logic in picking a Clash here, because again, the Echo and Maestro, she is an information operator. That is one of the things that she does for her team. And as you stated, the counters are not present on Orglis' Orgus, side, so this could be really good for uh, Accelerate if they play it correctly. And they're trying to use Clash right now to hold on to admin office, but the grenades from a man will go out and not get the kill, but Brian will as achieved attempts to dodge that grenade. So great teamwork there, finally being shown by Orglis. Good bandit trick by Schlongi, and he's gonna keep his mirror window alive. It's very rare to see a team defend admin. We've talked about this a couple times. That we expect oh. somebody who puts a beautiful nade from a man. I don't think he was trying no. to take out Schlongi. He wanted the castle. But he'll take out the he'll take the bandit out anyway. The biologic shield will get lit up, but of course it's a riot shield. That CCE shield will take no damage. You'll just see the Mars. Or you'll see how the bullets mar the shield in front of Clash. Mm -hmm. But other than that, she'll just retreat. So now you've lost admin, but look at the time. You spent two minutes. It cost you a mirror window, a castle barricade, and two operators, including possibly a C4 on Shlongi, which I didn't unfortunately get to see before he perished. That's going to mean that Attackers it's still a significant advantage bomb. in favor of Orglis here by numbers, but they have, they're going to have to hasten, hasten their push here. Yeah, uh, clearly from Orglis, their admin take is the most well-practiced part of Consulate for them. I mean, that's, that's obvious based off what we just saw. Uh, but Accelerate, as you stated, with 35 seconds to defend and still a Clash in play who is getting an abundance of un information for his team, um, this is still winnable for the defense. And that's not a good situation for Orglis. A peek from Clash, but I'm not sure what Biologic was thinking. He will go down easily. Crusher able to refract, yet he goes down. But in the two versus four, the smokes will be coming out and the attempted plant. By long desk, Crusher will take down the man. He gets the flank off the C4, two for Crusher, excellent play, that's his third, I believe, total. Thomas in the site, though, gives his life away for free after missing his C4, but oh no, the Fuser isn't being planted, and oh, just barely, Acid will get the final kill. Crusher doing his darndest, but he cannot go all the way. If Crusher had have just waited, there was no chance that that Jackal was going to be able to get the Diffuser down, and that would have been a perfect six rounds for Accelerate, but Orglis will find some footing eventually. They are still one round away from match points. They have a lot of work ahead of them and cannot drop more than one round if they want the win. They can't obviously drop two or else they lose. So this is how narrow it is. <laughs> six pick. He's got to be a six pick. I would imagine this is going to be a six pick. I There's no universe. There you go. So Acid will flex off onto the dock. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, it, it definitely does. Um, Attackers need to locate and I don't think they were they were just trying to they were trying to tease us. That's all it was. I mean, the the Tichanka is not a viable pick on most. Let's say most. Uh, I mean, there's there are some good. Tichanka sucks. Okay, he sucks, but but he is our Lord and Savior. Uh, no, but what I meant, what I was trying to get at there is uh, there are some spots you can put him where he can do things, but. There is no reason ever to pick him because there are always better options. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Orgus have managed to win a round in the, in the first half. That is absolutely fantastic for them. They definitely needed to take that one round away. Uh, if you end a half on a 6-0, you can pretty much uh, call the match at that point. I mean, it's not over 100%, but it's uh, close. If, nothing, if, if not a win for the 6-0 team, of course, a draw. Overall, though, despite that one win that Orgus managed to get out, it was a really dominant half for Accelerate. And now that they've moved to attack, and they were the ones setting the pace on defense, I, I feel like they're going to be even more fearsome on attack. I, I really do. 
One second is the difference maker there, Michael, between yeah. a 6-0 and a 5-1 for the time being. So One second or one kill? What, I, well, I mean that one second happened with the, yeah. one, with the one kill happened in the one second. Yeah. Yeah. It is, but it was yeah. close. It was very it, close. It was very, very close. Very, very close. close as it gets. Like one second close. <laughs> So, so if you're ever wondering about staying alive and not pushing objectives, whether you play in any league across any game mode in this game, you might want to realize that going for kills is not always the wisest thing to do. There was nothing really the wrong the way Crusher played that, though. He did try to take out the Jackal, assuming that the Jackal was going to go for the Diffuse. That was right. I don't think he suspected a push on Yellow Stairs. Anywho, you mentioned that the, the pace was being set from Accelerate, and well, look at that. They've got three, three speeds with lots of fragging potential. But they haven't really done all that much, you know? It's taken a minute and a half for them to be able to take control of Visa upstairs, or, or of Admin upstairs, just over top of Visa. They've opened up the Visa hatch as well. But that's really all that Accelerate's really shown for it, other than a couple bits of light gadget destruction on behalf of uh, the defense. They got a good basis for their attack, and by them, I mean Accelerate. But what isn't happening here is, well, I was about to say, Orglis has a full roster, but looks like uh, Biologic's gonna get the first kill of the round, just peeking from Long Death to Big Death. And uh, yeah, that's on Orglis, exposing themselves unnecessarily, asked specifically, of course. Uh, and that kill is going to be really important for the actual site take. Also, you mentioned the long sight lines here that you see on Consulate. Well, they just took out the dock, though, and the dock has such a long range playing all the way down from Long Desk towards Vending Machine. You can cover Printer as well. And that can be an especially problematic for Orglis, as they will have to engage at closer ranges if they're not the most confident in their shots. So they've opened up one wall here, which will put some more pressure on Orglis as Accelerate looks to try and wrestle control away from that a bomb site. So you've got Achieved hanging out on the window just by Connector, and of course Connector will need to be worked on at some point. There's a smoke playing in there from Orglis, but not an awful lot of time for Accelerate to work with here as Achieved takes some damage on a great run out from Crazy who should be able to get away, but no! Crusher drops and we will get the refrag, giving Accelerate another advantage. You lose the buck though and those frag grenades with Yeti playing the window. Not a ton of time, trying to see if somebody's gonna peek up onto the balcony. Yeti will give his position away as Crusher gets felled by Brian. It's a team effort from Orglis, with Shlongi working his way in. A great crossfire here, but Shlongi is there, chewed up and spit out by Brian, with Thomas needing to get one kill onto the Jaeger, but he looked oh! the wrong way, and for the second round in a row, Orglis wins it in the final second, this time on defense, just simply waiting. Unlucky timing for the Thatcher, but that's two for Orglis to see if they can regain some momentum, and with their first round victory on defense, they won't have console office for at least another two rounds, heading somewhere else, looking like Garage to start off. It all comes down to the last second once more, as you said. That is just such a heartbreaker for Accelerate twice in a row. This match could be over right now. The only difference being those two seconds. Now, overall... Orglis have been putting up a heck of a fight here compared to what we were seeing from them in the first five rounds of this match, but it is still coming down to the wire every single one of the rounds that they managed to win as compared to the rounds that Accelerate were winning, which were fairly dominant in Accelerate's favor. In that round, uh, one thing I really have to commend Orglis for, and it's the mistake that Accelerate made, is they didn't expend them, extend themselves into admin office. Accelerate were incapable of holding admin office. On top of that, Orglis had a really well-refined take into admin. When Orglis went to defense of the top floor, they did not make that same mistake. They simply played the site. And Accelerate were decently quick to get into admin office, get that control, and start working their way towards the site. But Orglis had almost a full roster when the actual fight came because they didn't give away any manpower early on, other than, again, Acid, who had a really foolhardy peek down by Long Desk. That run out from Crazy onto Achieved, who was repelled by the connector window, ended up being a very important thing yeah. for his team, because Achieved's position there could have easily cut off the two players, both the Legion and the Smoke, who were playing by the end of Long Desk, and then the Jaeger, who was also playing in connector. All three of those operators would have been spotted by Achieved's buck had he not been cut down on that repel. So, Ultimately, that gamble from Crazy cost him his life, but it was very worthwhile, and he definitely died for the betterment of his team as they walked away with a victory on that trade. So, it's going to be top floor here from Accelerate as they start to uh, drone their way in. They will be aware of one of their opponents inside a projector slash connector. Biologic's going to make that call to the rest of his team, and the Castle Barricades upstairs, actually, uh, upstairs are actually going to do a lot of work, in my opinion. This is a nice setup from Orglis. They've done 
well to establish uh, somewhat of a maze on the top floor, which is going to slow down Accelerate if they choose to continue to clear it. But it seems that they have uh, been swayed. They have been pushed away from that take upstairs, which is curious. They are adjusting for what seems to be an exclusive uh, piano garage take, maybe? I'm really puzzled by the fact that they have chosen to forego clearing the top floor. They had enough time. They were doing it somewhat efficiently, but uh, they're just not committing anymore. Maybe it's because they were afraid of the maze that they're not familiar with. And we did have Orbis doing very well on the drone counter. What? A very aggressive peek onto Achieved once again on the same side of the building's repels. He just looks towards the piano windows here. Repelled on the southern facade of the consulate. And there's Crazy with the SMG-11 in hand. Running that mute setup that has been enabled by the SMG-11 becoming something available to the mute players of the world as of late. A drone work from Achieved as he looks to drone himself in. The man gets felled by Schlong. A good entry there as Crazy has now been able to wake his, make his way all the way down to the bottom of Spiral Stairs. So he's come back to Earth and retreated to the site. This is essentially given Accelerate that first floor as they want it. They have to be wary of the second floor. And the fact that Achieved is staring at that open hatch would suggest to me, as the Castle of Yeti does still roam from above, there's not been a good enough job of Accelerate here. Maybe they're starved for drones, I'm not sure. But this should be information that they have available to them. Crazy will get the first kill for his team, though. Schlongi goes down, and that's definitely necessary, but really good for Orglis, as they only have 30 seconds left to defend. Yeti above. Again, this is because Accelerate did not clear above, able to deny control of Piano. And because of denying control of Piano, vertical pressure is alleviated for the anchors in sight. This is huge for Orglis. Again, coupled with the lack of time, but oh no, a misplay from Yeti and Achieve gets an easy kill. You can see the plant going down at the front of White, and it is successful. Thomas, some excellent cover there, gets the smoke. Crazy will land his C4, but it's post plant, so it doesn't matter in the end, or so it seems, as Accelerate are in the perfect position to hold this post. There's very little chance the defenders will win this round, unless Thomas gives away easy kills like he potentially could have just there. Achieved a very clean headshot onto Acid, and that's just crazy. In the one versus three, he barely has time to make it to the diffuser, and he will be taken down by Biologic. Accelerate, take another round, and they're first in the second half, putting themselves on match point. It's about one of the cleanest transitions that you saw. They were able to just get out of there the moment that diffuser went down. And one of the issues with consulate in the post plan on that site in particular is very unique because typically when you open up both of those garage panels, you're just going to run for the hills. And most attackers have an ACOG on their gun. Most defenders don't. And unless you've got a dock or even maybe an echo left, you got to pray that you know where the attackers are and you can land the shots because the attackers have the advantage of knowing where you're going to come from. They just need to watch the diffuser. You need to spot where the attackers could be, which could be anywhere. It could be all the way out by the railings. It could be close hugging either of the panels. It could be over on the stone walls. It could be by the car as well. So very difficult to, for you to regain your footing after you get knocked back from that diffuser going down. As attackers you put it in, as much as we don't try to call rounds over before they're over, that one was done almost immediately the moment that diffuser went down and would have required a re Really remarkable feat of skill from Orglis to be able to come back. So Accelerate, for the very first time since coming to Pro League, going to sit on match point. Impressively done there from Accelerate. I did call into question Accelerate's choice to rotate away from clearing the roamers on the top floor. You know, if you look at that, I think usually that would hurt your attack but they focused so intensely on yeah, simply pushing in through the garage panel, and it worked out. It worked out great for them. Five uh, and left. more importantly, uh, as much as it worked out great for Accelerate, again, I do have to say that I feel like Orglis missed some opportunities there. Yeti coming on the flank was a little too cautious, then he made an aggressive play to try and compensate into the flank watch from Accelerate, but he had an opportunity for a moment there to get some flank kills in piano. He just didn't tease it. Uh, you know, obviously he didn't have the information, uh, and you really can't blame him too much, but it's bad timing, unlucky, whatever you want to call it, and uh, Accelerate, again, that shift of play working out in the end because Orglis did not catch Accelerate on the shift. Now, we move back to the basement for potentially the final round here, but Orglis have been looking much more in this match 
as of the last round of the first half. My man being taken out also was a not a great start for that round, obviously, when you have not just one member of your team being taken out, but also the fact that it's a pulse who can call that pulse, or who can call the push, rather, mm -hmm. as uh, his gadget allows him to have a finger on that pulse, if he can use that expression, waiting for any of the possible advances down the two stairwells that pulse can see with the nine meters of his cardiac sensor. Crazy, who did an excellent job of getting away last time, is inside a bathroom. He's going to be fortified in there with a couple reinforcements. He's also got the hatch available to him if need be. And there's, well, there's a bunch of mute jammers that will prevent him from being droned out. Achieved using the best usage of his skeleton key possible. Tosses a grenade down, and it's just going to sail away. No, the intended target has scooted off. All the while, 90 seconds in, half of the round to go. And Accelerate have opened up both of these garage panels quite swiftly in comparison, leaving that middle panel as shelter, if need be. I really do like that Accelerator so efficient at taking the garage. I also appreciate that Orglis saw the issue in their defense last time and have adjusted accordingly. I believe they've got a little bit lighter on the top floor roam, but they still have a roaming presence. Schlongi is going to be that main flank watch, and an interesting operator put on that role. In this specific flank watch, you want as much HP as possible and much durability, more specifically, I suppose. Brian's going to get the first kill, though. Crusher goes down, that's the Thermite, who has already done his job. So not the most impactful frag, but the Planter, and it will push IQ into the role. Acid will need to ensure that he gets this kill, and that's pretty easy, as this is a sloppy entry from Accelerate that's going bad in a hurry. Schlongi fails as Crazy peeks around the corner, and it's a masterful shot with Thomas, given no reprise whatsoever. A little jump for joy there onto the various members of Orglus, able to stave off defeat, at least for the time being. They still have three rounds to go to try to keep this one at a draw, despite the odds being stacked against them. And with the victory on Garage, it being two rounds later, that means console office is going to open back up upstairs, allowing Orglus to go back to the site that did them well on their first defensive round. That was clearly the cleanest round from Orglis by far and away. It was a direct counter to how Accelerate played in the previous round, so... Good job to Orglis adapting on the fly and uh, throwing that counter punch. Accelerate really could not recover. They just started losing bodies one after another, and it all fell apart. Though, I have to imagine their momentum has not been entirely uh, st uh, stifled. I, I think they can really keep it going here, as they have been pretty dominant on Consulate thus far. They've only won a single attack, bomb. though, and that is worrisome for Accelerate fans. But there's still plenty of potential for them to take another. Again, it's worth noting that Orglis are going to have to win three rounds in a row just to tie this match. They are incapable of winning at this point. The big thing for Orglis, too, was the fact that half of this team is now woken up. If you saw the scoreline, you yeah. saw that both Maman as well as Yeti were the only two teams that had any real significant contributions. Yeti has cooled off while the rest of his team has joined in. You obviously can't be winning a game with only one or two people fragging well. Just ask Rampy and Space Station Gaming, who broke the record yesterday for most kills in a single pro league map, and yet his team still didn't walk away with the victory. <laughs> so to all of all those of you in ranked who say, oh, I dropped 12 kills and my team still lost, Rampy broke the record. His team still didn't win. It happens to the best of us. So for this for this match in particular, when you look at Orglas here, no slight, of course, to those ranked players, <laughs> But when you look at Orglis here, having the other half of the team wake up and be able to contribute not just in terms of utility, but also on the scoreboard, finding kills, it means that there's not as much pressure on getting frags for the couple members of the team who are doing more than their fair share. Chief G going to be drawing his way into the all-stairs. He will find his target and save the drum. That's good efficiency there from Achieved. And bad shots there from whoever's playing on yellow. The EMP is going to clear out any potential ADSs, but uh, interesting that uh, the Yeager's playing at Yellow Stairs, and there was no ADS because it wouldn't... Well, no, there is. That's interesting. <laughs> he must have been juggling it. The second EMP, though, will grab that ADS. Now Yeti is completely exposed. The grenade coming in, and it will hit something on the roof. So it looks like a missed grenade entirely. Yeah, it must have bounced off the window there from Achieved. A serious mistake, and uh, because of that, you're going to see Yeti actually get away with his life. That was a blunder and a half from Accelerate. So much utility invested in getting rid of this Jaeger, and they are unsuccessful. 
just going to hang here and try to find him around that pillar inside of Yellow Stairs, but they're not really going to have that much luck, relying a lot on Biologic's drone just to continuously give information on the Jaeger's position, but instead, that drone will be returned now as, well, Accelerator just stalled for the moment. Just waiting with the man seeing this angle in from the car. Uh-oh. And uh-oh, that's a problem. But no, there we go. We're back uh -oh. in action and... Uh -oh. That is interesting. I am hoping that this is a spectator bug, and it's very likely that it is. Uh, this match could very well be playing out completely normally right as we speak, just without us watching it. So yes. it probably is just a spectator bug. Yeah. Sometimes the internet stops working. It happens from time to time, certainly, yes. Um, so we will get back into the match as soon as possible. Uh, hopefully... None of that influence the actual gameplay. Right. And, I mean, it, if the team if the team plays on and Accelerate is still going, which they obviously should be, there's still a, there was a minute left in that round, you're likely going to see, are we going to keep playing? Is Orgless going to be able to pull it out on that site? Or are we going to see Accelerate finish things off and get their first possible victory of the season? Yeah, I, I think it's likely that Accelerate's going to be able to lock it out in the next three rounds, even if it's not this round. Uh, they are starting to stumble, though. I do have to say, and Orglis are, as you said, they're really picking it up. So, uh, could go either way. I do think, though, that Accelerate is going to be capable of just locking out one round. I, I, you're so close. Can't let it slip away. No. I've been ultimately, I've been very impressed with the way that Accelerate has played this. A lot of people were saying that they did better against EG despite the overwhelming scoreline showing otherwise as you assess your notes there. 1-7. Um, I mean, they, yeah, okay, they might have put up a fight, but 1-7 doesn't really lie. No, it doesn't. I mean, there were still flashes of brilliance that we saw from them, but I mean, you're going up against EG, who also just dismantled Rogue, and the difference between Accelerate and Rogue was literally one actual round of play, two technical rounds, <laughs> if you consider it. So there's not that much of a difference. It could just be a simple story of, you know, EG being uh, on top and not really giving a great idea of Accelerate. If we're taking a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a side here, I, I will say that evil geniuses uh, in this season are looking better than I've seen them in a long, long time. Like they, like they've always been one of the top in North America, but they look so good right now. Mm -hmm. In this match, Accelerate also looked pretty darn good. They had an amazing defensive half, dropping one single round, and on attack, again, I think it's it's what we were, you're talking about against evil geniuses, flashes of brilliance, uh, uh, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 not it's not solid yet. I think uh, Accelerate, given enough time to develop as a team, are going to be definitely formidable. Uh, but again, still kind of they're still new. It's still new. So we've been told that apparently the server crashed, and it wasn't just on our end. So the round will be replayed out as the teams also crashed from the matchup. So we will see a conclusion as we get that all set up for you and we'll get ready to go back into consulate for the final round here of just what is honestly our second match of the day. We still have Space Station and Dark Zero and then Rise Nation versus Team Reciprocity to, uh, to round us off. Yeah, so we have some pretty exciting matches up and coming though. It, in my ear, I believe we've just been confirmed that the round we're watching will be replayed because apparently everybody disconnected, so... That totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're going to get to pick up right where we left off. Now, we do realize that Consulate does tend to be more defender-sided. Look at this. So far, we played nine rounds. We were in the midst of the 10th, and the attackers have only won two rounds. That's pretty typical on some maps, though that ends up being a little bit more defender-sided than we would usually have. I think that is most amazing, as I said, given the fact that there's no Echo and no Maestro available, and yet still the defenders are winning. Now, a big part of that from Accelerate was because they just really seem to escape Orglis's clutches every single time around. The same can't necessarily be said for the inverse. And in fact, Accelerate's attacks were somewhat disjointed, but they were also cut down by really smart plays from Orglis. As, as much credit as we can give EXG, Orglis did definitely pick it up and has picked it up so far in the second half. No, I definitely agree. Uh, they definitely seem a, they, they seem a lot more solid on their defensive side, they, or just in general now that we've come into the second half, regardless of side. Um, the main thing that I was seeing from Orglis is teamwork. Uh, and great, fantastic, because I really do have to say, on the first half, Orglis seemed to lack 
teamwork in entirety, except for when they attacked onto Admin Office. Their Admin Office take in the very last round was beautiful. It was well coordinated, and it managed to get them a two-man advantage, which turned into a round win. And if it had not been for that round win, we would be done right now. We would be moving on to match number three. So, Orglis's coordination, their teamwork has picked up, and that is why I believe they're still in this. And Accelerate, as you mentioned, had a number of chances to be able to put this one away. You look at that final round of their defense on the console office upstairs, there's one second difference where Acid was able to get that very final kill, which is what ended up giving Orglis that round victory. The very next round, the Thatcher pushes in and can't connect onto the Jaeger, who's playing inside of Connector. Both those rounds go one way or the other. They go the other way, this match is over at this point. So, for Accelerate Gaming, you can't lose, which is good. You're gonna pick up your first point no matter what, so Accelerate will get at least one point on the board from this matchup due to the fact that the worst they can do is draw, which would, by the way, only be our second draw so far this season. But, as you mentioned, Orgless still's got a long way to go. Three, three rounds to try and stitch this together. Yeah, and uh, Orgus are definitely in a better position of the season overall, of course, because they did manage to win last play day against Rise. But uh, all that said, looks like we uh, are getting very close to being ready, just inches away. So we should be able to, again, if you uh, if you missed it, we will be picking up right where we left off. The round that was playing out did not finish. All of the players disconnected, so it's going to be a complete redo of that round. Uh, which is totally fair. Yeah, I mean, it's it's unfortunate that, you know, if you had a massive advantage, but I think everybody was still alive, actually. I when think, the disconnect happened. I yeah. think all 10 players were still alive, even though my man was definitely under fire. So here we have it. Still match point for Accelerate. Same operators, same site, upstairs, console office as it is newly unlocked. Garage will remain locked for the next two rounds at minimum. So I think one of the advantages that may have been lost there from Orglis is that their roamer downstairs will be Defenders anticipated this time around by Accelerate. Now at the same time, the way that the engagement was playing out on the bottom floor, it looked as though Accelerate was going to kill whoever that player was. I want to say it was my man on the Legion. Not entirely sure. But whoever it was, they were, I think, dancing with death. The Accelerate would have, may have lost a player there, but they probably would have won the fight. So that advantage being lost for Orgus in terms of information, I don't think is too detrimental overall. Yeah. I'm very interested to see the way that they attack this Jaeger play of the on yellow stairs. So you mentioned that uh, you were you mentioned how five seconds to insertion. Uh, they dumped a lot of utility in and didn't get the results that you had won. And they had won. And I think a big part of that is, oh, spawn pick there from Yeti. Would have been nice to possibly see what he can have happen. Dangerous. But he'll run off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they invested uh, two EMPs from Thatcher and two grenades from Buck, and they got no results. And by they, of course, I'm talking about Accelerate here. Yeti, well, okay, no result may be unfair. They took half of Yeti's HP. But that is next to no result with the investment that was made by Accelerate. And now, uh, they're not going to have to make that investment here in this uh, this version of the round because they clearly know that uh, they need to work on that coordination just like Swanga needs to maybe work on the drone throws. Though, uh, you know, I can't fault them for that. I, I make that same mistake all the time. <laughs> the only difference is I'm not a professional. Anyway, Schlongi all the way inside of admin office with his drone now. Only a few seconds wasted there. Not a huge deal. Chief could be working his way up to the yellow skylight once more. He's maybe going to be going for the grenades this time. I'm not sure. Uh, definitely a risk. You can see the unreinforced walls in the closet B are going to allow for him to open that up nice and easy. Confirm that it is not being played. Yet he will lose the same amount of HP that he lost last time. Half. And the nade following up will down him. So excellent use of the utility this time around by Accelerate. And oh no. Acid is too slow with the Stim Pistol. His teammate will die. And Accelerate put themselves up 5-4. So, a great start. And they have an opportunity to right the wrongs that they had done. And they take hold of that opportunity. And they nail it. So that's what you need if you're Accelerate here. Still searching for their first one of the season. And now on the precipice. But they will have to transition inwards. Good drone work there from Accelerate, as you can see. Crusher playing on Repel, has an angle, and oh, my man dives up and takes a chance. 
but the chance falls just short. Schlongi is the Ash absolutely punishing him. On Repel on this window is once again going to be achieved as Brian tries to play around it. The smoke gets a little bit too aggressive, but he has a shotgun and that is very bad for achieved. The problem is Brian is now gonna have to try to work with two different angles. Get an inside look of the way that the gun works and it's gonna be both acid and crazy picking up kills as achieved gets one of his own. He'll trade it off and put Orglis once again at a disadvantage. Double ACOGs for Orglis still left as Biologic's position will be given away due to the goo mines that are positioned on yellow stairs. Also, there will be a Thatcher there with them, Michael. Only 20 seconds could possibly separate the good from the bad here. The Doc will peek out and Biologic will sneak on in. There's the Thatcher of Thomas to finish it off. And it'll leave just crazy and Accelerate Gaming will get their very first victory of the season and their very first Pro League victory. It only took a roster change and a little bit of gumption. Excellent work from EXG to topple Workless. Yeah, excellent work indeed. And uh, that round was a lot cleaner in an execution as opposed to their previous attempt, starting with that take on to the yellow stairs. Getting rid of Yeti was, I think, the key to the round there for Accelerate. And Acid was very close to being the hero of the round, I have to say. He played it pretty perfectly, but at the end, unable to win the fights that were necessary from yellow, despite being in a good position by the bathroom. Overall, great job to accelerate. They definitely earned that win.